Hello friends. Uh, today we will be discussing communication technology for small grids, part one. The content uh, in this uh, discussion will be a communication architecture of smart grids and wide area measurement system that is WAMS. First of all, let's start with the architecture of the power system. Since uh, we have uh, two different layers, uh, one is the communication layer and one is the power system layer. We have already dealt with the power system layer where you can see there is a generation part and there comes the transmission part which is again moved on to the distribution and to the customer premises. So overall, right from the generation to the customer premises, there is a, a communication link established between all the entities where the data is being transferred uh, between among the utility as well as the customers. So right from the generation till the customer, you can see here there is a communication layer. The communication layer exists. And uh, when we talk about communication layer, it is divided into several parts. For example, you can see here uh, the communication at the part of consumer is uh, divided into or it has been nomenclatured as a hand, band and IAM. This is nothing but the home area network or let's say building area network or let's say industrial area network. Then moving ahead, you have a field area network or a neighborhood area network, which is MAN. Similarly, moving on more ahead towards the generation, we will have a wide area network. And then you have, uh, so this is how it is being divided. So you can have, uh, or you can notice one thing that the different communication layers which are being defined and which has been named, it basically, it covers a certain area. So you can see if you are talking about the small area, it is basically a hand, a home area network. When you talk about a little bigger area, which is a, let's say distribution side, the distribution side will be a neighborhood network area. And when you come to the transmission side or much larger area, it is a wide area network. So let's see it in a more simplified way. Uh, let's see here. Uh, as uh, I told you earlier also in the previous slide, in a very simplified manner, you can see here home area network is nothing but the consumer side, whereas the distribution side is nothing but the neighborhood area network, and the power transmission side from the generation side it is nothing but the wide area network. So basically, the communication architecture of smart grid is uh, being uh, nomenclatured in the basis of the area or the range which is it covering. If it is uh, in the transmission side it is wide area whereas in the distribution side it is a neighborhood network area area network and the home area network is towards the consumer side. So I hope the architecture of the communication of smart grid is uh, very very clear to you. Now uh, in this uh, particular topic we will be basically concentrating on the communication layer we are not uh, dealing with the application of the power control layer we are uh, focusing on the communication layer that is the van hand man etc so when you talk about the communication technologies i have listed here a few of them the application part of the technology the data rates and approximate coverage distance in meters or in kilometers has been given in this particular slide you can go through it uh, different technologies will have different uh, data rates of transfer uh, of the data so you can see the technology for example zigbee has a tra data transfer rate of 250 kbps uh, so since the data transfer rate and it is uh, not very high and it is approximately covering a range of 10 to 100 meters you can see here the range is very less and if the range is very less so this Zigbee technology will be more useful and helpful in the home appliances or in, in a home area network. So this is how the things work. And for example, if you see about satellite, the last technology, this, this is obviously this is a very high distance of coverage. It can be covering I mean, a large area. So similarly, all the technologies will have a certain limitations and boundations of the distance and the data transfer rate. Based on that, the application will be decided. So moving ahead, why this came into picture and how this came into picture, why we moved on to the data communication. So it all started with wide area measurement system. In early 1980s, there was a problem of acquiring the data of the power system in order to have 
an efficient uh, power system and a reliable power system so uh, there was a uh, body being set up and uh, wire data measurement system came into picture in 1980s which was further uh, defined in 2006 uh, as a, a strategic effort to meet critical information needs for a changing power system the definition again changed and with the changing definition the currently which we follow is is nothing but the vamps combines the data provided by synchro phasers and conventional measurement with capability of new communication system in order to monitor operate control and protect power system in a wide geographical area so from the last definition you can see here first of all we are covering a geographical area we are dealing with a geographical area and the functionality is being done is to, to monitor operate control and protect power system now how it is being done it is been done done through the data which we are getting from different uh, instruments uh, different measurement uh, devices which are there into the system so i hope you have understood the meaning of this uh, van next uh, how the process takes place <coughs> how the van process occurs as i told you uh it's uh, the process mainly entirely depends on the data the data which is available this data is being communicated to the application part and this application part will further move on to the controlling of the power system now what does this data resources mean the data resources will be is categorized into two types the functional data and the non functional data so the functional data are the data which is uh, mainly used is Uh, minute to minute, or uh, it is uh, it, it is uh, basically more important data. For example, voltage, current, and frequency. Whereas the non-functional data, for example, the flickers uh, or there is some uh, fault occurring in the system, those data are being recorded, which are not uh, uh, used in the real time, which are being analyzed afterwards uh, for uh, uh, for. Uh, we are setting up a secured power system so this is how data resources uh, are being available the data is being available and this data is being communicated to the application part and where the application will part uh, take control of the power system so this is how our ramps process occurs so we will have our data resources being collected through various equipment and similarly communication system will also have various types of communication system so how the uh, vamp process so vamp process basically includes three different inter- interconnected sub processes first the data acquisition part first the data will be uh, taken from various devices and then we can we have already seen it will be transmitted and then the process will take place the processing of the data will take place so the measurement system and the communication system together they will perform the sub uh, processes so the communication part takes place and there are some places where vamps may also send command directly to perform some actuators in a remote site so some actions might be given by the vamps through command uh, for the remote site for the actuator to do some work so this is how a vamp process takes place now as i told you data resources there are several uh, units which have been installed in the power system and for example there is a master terminal unit the remote terminal unit or the sada which uh, you are all aware of programmable logic controller then similarly you have phase measurement unit and so on and so forth so these are the various types of uh, instruments available for the data resources available in the power system next uh, coming on to the con- communication part once the data is being acquired this data has to be communicated so the communication infrastructure can be of two types one is the guided and the unguided so guided is nothing but the wired type that is the power and carrier or the optical fiber or the lead line so these are the basically uh, the line the media and whereas unguided is a wifi based or a wireless a wireless communication infrastructure So unguided media has wireless personal area network WPAN which uh, basically uh, consists of bluetooth or wifi or zigbee 
whereas wireless local area network LAN consists of Wi-Fi and the wireless metropolitan area network or the uh, wireless uh, neighborhood area network which consists of WiMAX, CPS, CPRS, CDMA, etc. And the last uh, wireless wide area network uh, consists of the satellite communication. So these are the communication infrastructure which is available for the WAMP in order to transmit the data which is being acquired. Now the application part, once the data is being acquired and the processing which takes place, the same data is being used uh, through the different system operators or the consumers and the customers. So this data can be used uh, by either utility side or the customer side. So obviously the data is uh, applicable in basically three main groups that is towards generation or towards the transmission and towards the distribution application. Apart from this, uh, this RAMP can also be applied. The data can also be applicable in order to have a subscription automation or a feed automation or a consumer side automation. So this data available can also be used in order to provide automation at various levels. So this was all about uh, the RAMP and the infrastructure and the architecture of uh, communication. I hope you have understood this particular topic. Thank you very much.